Hey, Nikki, how's it going? It's going really well. How are you doing, Nagel? <laughs> I'm doing it fantastic. So, Nikki, we know each other for many years, also from Denmark, and uh, you recently opened a Scandinavian-inspired restaurant in San Francisco called Canteen. You've been helping centers in different ways. You also was a part of an inspiration for our new briefing center called The Kitchen. And the whole idea was to get people together over a conversation in the kitchen and kind of that kind of Scandinavian inspired kind of kitchen feeling. A lot of our employees, a lot of our customers, a lot of our stakeholders and centers are kind of dealing with like what it means to work from home and, oh, you know, all the isolation and all everything. But it's a little bit like it's a little bit different reality for somebody running a restaurant, isn't it? Very much so. Yeah. We actually have quite a few customers that come in and they, of course, want to know how we're doing. They're happy that we're open and so forth. But then I ask them, how's it going with you? Oh, I'm so bored. I'm thinking, oh my, I'm so envious of you. You know, we're definitely not bored. We're keeping, we're on our toes, just trying to adapt to all the changes that are coming up and so forth. So tell me like, how did you adapt? Because you had to do it very quickly. It's a lot of little steps, trying to figure out, trying to navigate what we had to do, what we wanted to do, what we were allowed to do. Um, and it still is changing all the time. But once we got over that hump and we said, okay, no matter what, we're going to stay open as long as we can. So we've had to adapt to, of course, take out only. Our dining room is now basically a storage room. It's a whole new ball game now. And it's an odd dynamic because before our business was very heavy in the weekends. Everybody wanted to come out, eat brunch. And now it's quite different. We have some big lunch pushes now during the week because people are at home. Also, in addition to the meals that we're doing for the city, and then our weekends are more steady, where we can kind of breeze, where it, was, it wasn't like that before. Tell me a little bit about what, what are those meals for the city? So the meals for the city, we started with an organization called San Francisco New Deal. The whole idea was is that in order to, to support the small businesses and to support the most vulnerable residents of the city, we would team up with the city and they would buy meals off of us and we would be able to stay open and keep the restaurant running. And then actually after a few weeks, then we transitioned over to an even larger organization. It's called World Central Kitchen run, run by a gentleman called Jose Andres, who's very well known in the food industry. It's actually a whole different mindset of making food for people that um, where it's not about my culinary vision and about wanting to, um, you know, what I'm serving, what I think people should be eating, but it's more about giving a little bit of care and hope to somebody who might not be getting any more food for this day. This might be their only meal. One thing I wanted to ask you about so much of running a restaurant is this experience of like hosting and welcoming people and just yeah. like sharing, see, seeing people enjoying a meal. And now you're like, you're sitting now with your mask. You, you took it off to do this interview. Exactly. Yeah. Even like when things start to reopen, like having, running a restaurant will be very different. What does that, what does that do to you, to your kind of your experience, your thinking about running a restaurant? First of all, I'm trying to run the business right now um, with blinders on. Uh, I'm not trying to think too much about what's being said to my left or right. It's just best for me to keep focused on making this be the best it can be right now at this stage. Is there, has there been any realization of, oh, this is actually this is actually something that you stumble upon that is actually a really good idea, something that could you could scale going forward? There are lots of good things coming out of this, I have to say. And it wasn't only until I was pushed into a complete corner and ha had to make a choice because, you know, just staying stagnant wasn't going to get me anywhere. Um, but we have seen a lot of potential with things that we can package easily. For example, we have our curried herring salad. We have our smoked trout salad. We have beet hummus. We have these things that we can easily package. People love that. 
people love to have something else that isn't you can't find in the same way on the next block. It's very cool to see kind of the resilience also being built up and, and kind of the entrepreneurial spirit that, you know, by the end of the day, will take us all through this. Right, uh, right. So, so, yeah. So very, very, very cool, Nikki. So thank you. Good luck with everything. I look to be forward uh, so, uh, to look to be back soon. Um, yeah. Getting some of my, uh, my herring crack. Uh, I'll save it. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Say hi I'll, save it, I'll save a seat for you when we open. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, take care. Thank Ciao. you.